So I was going to go to bed, but I noticed a bunch of SJWs on Twitter had reacted to the fact that I was deplatformed by Patreon by trying to defend Patreon, which is really weird, because Patreon appeared to be the ones in the wrong here. But, hey, not Sargon. You know exactly what happened here. Yes, I do. That's why I put it in my video. You clearly don't, though. Patreon didn't actively look for you. Oh, hang on a second, Trilaster. Should we read what I wrote? What you're quoting? They're actively looking for ways to deplatform anyone who is not politically correct. I didn't say they were actively looking for me. They know who I am. They are apparently watching what I do according to their emails. And it did take a bunch of right-wing trolls to get them onto this and make a bunch of complaints. So what I'm saying is they're actively looking for ways to interpret the things being said in ways, in fact, that don't even match their own terms of service, according to Jack Conte himself, in order to get me deplatformed. That's what I said. That's what you misinterpreted. Don't worry, I'll just say no problem when you take it back. Stop putting everything in the frame of your war on the SJWs. The fuck do you think this is? What do you think hate speech is? This is exactly the problem. Hate speech is SJW nonsense for you've sinned and we now can punish you like the heretic that you are. Fuck off. This is precisely the war on the SJWs. This is exactly what they're doing to me personally and you stand in defense of that by trying to obscure that fact. But actually stand for your principles. I think I am, actually. And I think I know my principles better than you do. Especially given you're an SJW who probably thinks I'm a fascist. So shut up. Idiot. And obviously, I can't have principles. Wait, where? Suppose principles? Yeah, I'm not, I'm not consistent with my principles or anything. This age, well, why would Patreon care? Well, actually, that actually really proves my point, doesn't it? Because this shouldn't have been an issue, according to Patreon's terms of service, who complained exclusively about content put on their site. Thank you for proving my point. When I think SJWs, I think huge corporations making decisions for maximum profit. They're not making decisions for maximum profit. They're getting rid of someone who, and lots of people, in fact, who'd have made them lots of money. They actually are doing this because of ideology. So better reass reassess your vision of what a corporation is. Even Wozley, though. Woz, is, that's, this is the saddest story on the internet, I think. Wozley used to be a, a sensible centrist guy, made really good videos, and actually picked apart other people's bullshit narratives. And for some reason, like 11 months ago, he decided to hide all of his videos critical of the left wing and leave up all of his videos critical of the right wing and then start defending SJWs on Twitter, which is pretty incredible. Funny how when it's right wing trolls fucking his shit up, he always finds a way to blame the left. Sorry, um, was it? I think jolly old El Presidente here has a good point. Right wing trolls aren't in charge in Patreon. Good, good point that, don't you think, was? That kind of debunks your narrative right there. The narrative, it's your narrative that you are currently in the middle of debunking, or at least someone in your comment section says. Their hands aren't clean here, and you could argue Patreon went out of his way to ban Sarkon. Well, since I didn't break the terms of service, I think that's the only argument that we can make. That this seems to have been either personal or political, and hey, you, you can't possibly think there's a difference between the two, given the side you've chosen was. And so, you know... I think, yeah, we can blame the left for this. This is Patreon acting with... I mean, what, are you saying Silicon Valley is an overwhelming leftist? Do they not talk to each other? Do they not employ social justice warriors almost every level? Like, I speak to people who also live there, who are opposed to what they're doing, and they say things like, it's the activists in the company effectively unionizing, you know how they like talking about unions, that are kind of holding the CEOs hostage with these hate speech laws. That's what I've heard. I can't corroborate that. I can't prove it. You can say, well, that's just yeah, true. That's just hearsay. But it is weird how these things change, isn't it? Because Jack Conte has allowed me on that platform for years, and he didn't seem to interpret his own terms and conditions in the way that the Trust and Safety Council did. Very interesting. Another thing as well, Twitter, like 2009, they were very pro-free speech. Fast forward eight years, they're very much pro-curated content. And Jack Dorsey looks like he's about to fight, reach Zen. Like, that picture, you know, like, he's he looks like he's a man who's centred himself. But like, right, the entire world is crazy, and I just have to navigate a tight rope, and I'm going to do it. That's how Jack Conte looks to me these days. And um, Jack Conte, Jack Dorsey, sorry, from, uh, from Twitter. And, uh, and Jack Conte seems to be trapped in a world of his own 
hell, a hell of a time making, sorry. Because he sits there and in his interview with Ruben, he's like, no, we're not going to be that kind of company. We're definitely going to do these things. He, I mean, like one clip I left out, just because I couldn't find a good way of putting it in, was he said something like, a lot of companies keep their terms and conditions secretive, and, but Patreon isn't going to be like that except none of this information was on your website, and this is something that either if Patreon had this behind the scenes, they didn't tell us, you know? So he's he looks like he's not running the company the way he wants to have it run. And like I said, I've spoken to people from Silicon Valley who are opposed to this, and they seem to think that this is the case. And honestly, given, like, the Google's ideological echo chamber, all the stuff that was leaked from their message boards and stuff like that, I'm having a hard time imagining it's not the case at this point. I mean, James Damore seems to think it's the case. So was, all I'm saying is, you're a fucking turncoat and you're a traitor to your own principles, and you know that what you're, I've said there is completely true, and what you're saying is actually propagandistic defence. You are a disgrace, right? So Jordan Peterson posted this. Twitter users, I want to make a full list of those left and right who have been deplatformed by institutions. Let's count. I haven't gone through this, right? So we've got Gab, I guess we're going to call that right wing, deplatformed by pff, everyone, for no fucking reason. Go daddy epic blah, blah blah blah. I love I love how um, <laughs> they've they've felt the need to respond. I did um, yeah, sure, Epic. Okay. Um so also so the Red Elephants, Owen Benjamin, Sabo, Sam Hyde, Jared Taylor, American Renaissance, Anthony Cumia, Tommy Robinson, Paul Golding, Jada Franson, James Alsop, Baked Alaska, Roger Stone, Martin Shkreli, Chuck Johnson. Milo Yiannopoulos, Laura Luma, Liz Crokin. That's 19 in total, and they're all right-wingers there. Oh, Alex Jones and Infowars, so we'll call that just 20. Um, all right-wingers. Where are the where where are the left-wingers who are being deplatformed for these things? I mean, you're gonna are you gonna give me something like furry community or something? Not like a, a lot of these were like like Jada Franson, whether you like it or not, she had two million followers on Facebook. Like that's you can't just ignore that. Anthony Cumia like Milo, like, these people are not, like, a lot of them are, right, are like, far right, but a lot of them aren't. Owen Benjamin, Relevant, Sabo, like, they're not far right, they're just conservatives. Laura Loomer is actually just a conservative, really. She's not a Nazi, obviously. I don't know about Liz Crokin. But, um, obviously deplatformed by Twitter, Julian Assange, <laughs> that's interesting. Uh, WikiLeaks by Amazon, PayPal, and others. Well, good to be on the side who's deplatforming WikiLeaks. You know you're fighting for the people then. You're definitely not supporting the elitist regime. All I'm saying is... Oh, here we go. Faith Goldie. I mean, she's actually a white nationalist. But Jack literally says, we don't judge by ideology. Yes, you do, Jack. Yes, you do. That's the principal method by which you make your decisions. You just think that you don't. You just make um, you make it up to yourself. You say, oh, no, we're doing it on manifest observable behavior. Okay, well, what was mine? It wasn't. It was outside of what you were saying. You're talking shit. Tree of Logic was banned for insulting David Duke. That's interesting. Black conservative woman. What I'm saying was is that it's obviously ideological. I think we can just take it as read that there is a massive ideological bias in Silicon Valley, and it's working deliberately to suppress, again, we call them all right-wing, but, I mean, I would consider myself still centrist. So then they came for the centrist, was, and you had decided to flee to the far left because you're a fucking coward.